this next corner, you're gonna make a left. Wow. We hung out right here. This is where I played some of the best football of my life, right here. Nobody could touch me. That's the house right there. I started drinking in this house probably, I wanna say 12. To this day, I don't really know what propelled me to just reach under there and pop the cork. My name is David and I was arrested 14 times for being under the influence of a narcotic. And no one, from a prosecutor to a DA, to a judge, to a cop, to even a public defender say, this is his 14th time through here, Your Honor, for the same charge. What if we tried something different? He needs help, not one time, not one single time. And could California run out of cash? We need to balance our budget. As the state could go broke. California needs all hands on deck to collect any money that it can. Now we're spending about $50,000 a year to incarcerate someone. $50,000 a year. Why wouldn't we spend a fraction of that on the front end for drug treatment, for education, for all the things that we know do work? That's all he did was holler. That's all he did. Hey, what? You want to do what? Now say it again. What? Ha, ha, ha. Every time he opened his mouth, everybody in the family would pee in their pants. <laughs> I got to be involved in theater from an early age. And then I started doing comedy because I loved the attention. It was approval, instant gratification. When he started doing the coke, doing the comedy, his, just his whole attitude and personality changed. After 13 Long Islands, and during one set, one set, 13 Long Islands, bunch of coke, I was liable to say and do anything. I was being paid to be out of my mind. I'm over someone's house, my best good friend. Um, I go in the bedroom, I start getting high, I can't stop, I'm out of control. So I'm banging on the door and he's not opening the door. And so I'm like, David, I'll have to call the cops, he's gonna come. He's like, no, 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 please, please don't call the cops. They're going to take me away, they're gonna take me away. I come out sweating and there are the Oakland, two Oakland policemen. Looking at him, when he came through that door, he was no longer the person that I knew. still painful because the hardest thing is to see your best friend on drugs, you know? We're not going to hold those people forever. Uh, once they're released from prison or jail, um, they're right back out into the community with the same problems they had that got them in the system in the first place, and they've still got their drug addiction. All I thought about when I was sitting in jail was getting out of jail so I could get high to forget that I'd ever been in jail. They never talked to him. They never dealt with what was really bothering him, what was behind the alcohol, what was behind the drugs, why was he using. I had been living in my car, and then my transmission went, and I had spent all my money, any money I got on drugs, so the transmission went. I just left it at a gas station. So I'm over in San Francisco. I found this, this old beat-up futon in, in this kind of uh, little doorway and I, I wrapped it around me and I woke up the next day and I, and I realized this is what it's come to. I had lost, I thought, every, everything near and dear to me. My sons, my best good friend, my mom wasn't speaking to me, my family. Basically, you know, it's like you're dead. He gives me a call at work, says I'm, I'm ready. He says, you know, I've contacted this program at Options and he told me a little bit about it. And then I went there the next day and, and sat, on the, sat on the steps for like an hour and a half to make sure that I got in. It was difficult, however. He was not an easy client. And, and many of our clients are very difficult. But they wear down and it's that relationship, it's that unconditional love. He changed. I'm a very, very good person. And I don't know this if I don't get treatment, if I don't if I'm not allowed the chance to get beneath the drugs and the alcohol and find out what the demons are. And it's an ass whooping you have to take, but at the end of the day, I'm a healthy, productive member of society and I'm not draining what little resources we have now. It's been, what, two years now? Never got it registered, he hasn't taken a drink, he hasn't smoked or high or anything. Yes, I have my best friend back. And it's just, I don't know, every day I look at him and it's just like a blessing. My life now is just, it's just phenomenal. I just have a lot to be grateful for.
this is my life now. Yeah. I think he could have been saved a lot sooner if they had a program that reached out to him and dealt with the real problem. The story of his own recovery, right, which had nothing to do with criminal justice system, but rather his own initiative and some luck, frankly. People aren't going to jail because they're partying. They hurt, they're in pain, something happened. Give them a chance to find out what that is, you know, so they can deal with it. We could give people an opportunity and head them off of the pass before they got to jail to get them into treatment. We took a fraction of the money that we spend to incarcerate people and instead focused it on addiction treatment and the public health uh, problems that flow from drug addiction. Uh, we could solve this problem, keep our community safer, and have money left over to do the things that government's supposed to be doing. Now would be the best time because we didn't do it yesterday. We can't continue to do what we're doing with any hope that the results will be any better. Look at my life. Look what I've done. You know, everybody can do that. It works.